Thank everyone for coming. I know people traveled a long way to get here. Uh, we got Joe from DC, which is great. And I know some people even parks. got on planes for this. So, Park. Yeah, Park, shout out. Um, so thank you guys for that. Uh, also, I want to thank you, Kate, for uh, putting this together. I know like you spend a lot of weekends traveling around outside of your 16-hour work days, uh, doing what you can for, for really what you believe in. It's awesome. Uh, truly inspirational. And uh, I know you had some things to say, so I want to give you the mic. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you all so much. That is way louder than I expected. Thank you all so much for being here. This is incredibly honoring to me as someone who has my whole life been trying to help others in the meantime of building myself. So I do want to share a couple remarks about a little bit about my story and then share a little bit about the contributions that each of you have made to the organization that has literally changed my life. So as many of you know, Mom, Alec, and I grew up in Connecticut, a small little family, and Mom always taught me that I need to be direct in everything that I do, and if I want something, I need to fight for it. And my dad always taught me that if I want to make change, I have to make it myself. And he never meant make change because you're blind. He meant make change because all of us are on this planet for a reason, and for one way or another, we are placed on this earth with meaningful rationale, and if we don't take advantage of that, that's a missed opportunity. My brother always taught me to get up when I fall and to approach each day as positively as possible because someone else is hurting much more than you are. So those three people in my life has shaped every moment of who I am, and I think part of my passion for working with blind students and inspiring them is twofold. And this gets into a little bit about the National Association of Blind Students. One is, society questions us every single day of our lives. You walk into a room and you are automatically the person with a guide dog or with a cane. You're automatically different than every single person in that room. And feeling that way makes you be strong. You have to be strong in order to persistently be okay with every day. So. The other piece of it is we have to have confidence in ourselves and oftentimes so many blind students, whether it's from their parents, their educators, whomever it is, doubts their abilities. So we in the National Association of Blind Students teach confidence and instill independence in our students every single day through leadership development, through legislative action on Capitol Hill, pushing for equal access to education every single day because if we are in the classroom, we deserve to be in the classroom. So in high school, I was losing my sight, a little too quickly for me to handle it, and I didn't always know where to turn or what to do. So I started college, I got a guide dog instead of a cane, simply because I thought that my little Enzo would be a social magnet much more than a white stick in my hand would be. And I was, I was definitely embarrassed, and that's, I was insecure. I didn't want to be different. Growing up in Greenwich, Connecticut, no one does. Everyone wants to fit in. And it was a little difficult for me to navigate those conversations when it was quickly losing my vision. So two years before I graduated college, I lost the rest of my sight. And it was three months before starting my dream job at Deloitte & Touche. And I had no idea what I was gonna do. I knew that I wanted to continue my life plans of being a consultant, I knew I wanted to be at the firm that I deserve the job in getting, but I didn't know how to grapple with the idea that I had zero vision when I had a little before. And now I look back and I don't even know why I was scared. The National Association of Blind Students has taught me that fear is only going to hurt us. And every day now, I approach blindness as simply a nuisance. So when everyone tells me, how young my mama looks. I believe them, because I know that she looks awesomely young and I don't need to know that. When everyone tells me how handsome my boyfriend looks, I never question it and I always know that I look at life through a different lens. And that doesn't mean that I'm hindered or have different you know, barriers. It simply means that I'm a little different and can accomplish everything that anyone in this room can. And our organization pushes that into all of our students. So thank you all for being here. I'd also like the first vice president of our organization to share a few words. Here's Syed. Thank you. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I would say that I am a breathing example of what Catherine has been working on for the past few years and what this organization works on. Growing up in Western Mass, I didn't have a successful blind role model to emulate. I really struggled soci socially, athletically, academically, and professionally. I really didn't see that there was any bright future uh, in my life. And I went to Boston to a convention that Catherine was hosting for blind students. And there I met a tall, confident, strong, successful individual. And she really told me that, you know, what's your excuse? You can be athletically successful. I row for Wake Forest. Uh, what's your excuse for not achieving academically? I'm a computer science. I can even keep a track of it. Like Catherine majored in computer science and math and statistics, you name it. Uh, she's like, what's your excuse for not being like excelling socially? Look at this room right now, you know? She brought all of us together. So that's really what this organization worked on. And then through that work and through what Catherine did, I was able to transfer to a great university. I'm at UT Austin, I'm graduating in the spring. She pushed me to go into athletics. I ended up joining the powerlifting team. She told me that I could be the best for myself, whether it be in my religious community or my social circles or my family. So I would just like to say that I, I'm the breathing example of what she's been working on, what this organization has been working on. I'm so thankful to her and this organization and for everybody who came out tonight to support this work so we can continue to build. Thank you.